Hey, yeah, good afternoon, YouTube. So I wanted to try out my uh, digital battery analyzer on this jump start pack just to uh, test out the cranking amps and internal resistance. So what I was going to do first is I'll clip this on to the jump start clamps. So with this meter, you can set the specified cranking amp. So it's set to 500, and then you run the test. So what it does is it compares the computed cranking amps. So it's saying 500, this, I guess that's the entered value and the computed value. So it's reading weird. Not sure what that means, but let me turn it off. What I want to do now, just as a separate test, Let's see if I can test right on the battery terminals. Try that again. Okay, that's a little better. So we're getting 13.13 and 12.3 milliohms. And that works out to 251 cranking amps. Finally figured out the problem I was having. These clamps on this uh, battery analyzer are kind of peculiar in that they, they're a four-wire clamp. If you can see, there's a blue and a brown wire. In here, there's also two wires on the negative side. So one of the wires is the one that puts the load current, and then the other wire measures the voltage. So they're doing a four wire measurement. They've got two current sensing wires and two voltage sensing wires. So that way they ignore all the resistance in these cables here. But what happens is, if you look inside, the blue wire is hooked to this jaw, the brown wire is hooked to that jaw, and if they clamp around a battery post, everything's connected. But when I was clamping onto these, I would just clamp one side or the other, and that doesn't work. In order to get a really good transfer between these clamps, what I did was grab a half inch steel bolt, and that way this clamp has a good grip and this clamp has a good grip, and we're getting full current transfer or minimum resistance. And then I have the same thing over here. So let's see what we get on the meter this time. I get uh, Pretty similar readings to that, then. I've got, uh, let's see if we can stop that there. So what I've done is I've tried a number of different tests. So I went from clamp to clamp. So every time you measure, you're going to get a slightly different number. So I did clamp to clamp, and I got 22.79. Here it was 24.46. And then I did negative clamp to positive terminal and I got 1776 so that reduced it 5 milliohms by eliminating the positive cable here and then let's see here I went from the positive terminal to the switch right here and that gave me 16.62 milliohms. I did the positive to negative terminal, got 12.42 milliohms. And then I did positive terminal to the input of the switch and got 12.57 milliohms. So that basically says this cable is pretty good. There's only a uh, fraction of a milliohm resistance there. And then I went from the negative terminal over to the positive clamp, got 16.6. So that's telling me there's about 12 milliohms between the two cables. And I think that's about what this shows. So if I did Clamp to clamp, I got 22 or 24 milliohms. If I did terminal to terminal, I got about 12 milliohms. And if I did terminal to clamp, I got about 18. If I did terminal to clamp, I got about 16. So that's saying there's about 
five or six milliohms in each of these cables. So that's saying there's a little more resistance in the negative side. You've, you've got this cable, you've got the contactor, and you've got this cable. On the positive side, it's just a straight run out. So I'm thinking that's probably what you would expect. There's going to be a terminal here, a terminal there, and then you've got the jaws, you've got whatever you're clamping to. Just a few milliohms at every point adds up to five. So I think I think the cables are okay. I mean, this isn't going to start a big Caterpillar <laughs> diesel engine or anything. I mean, it's, uh, you know, they're basically saying about 100, 100 cranking amps. Yeah, see there, every time you test it, you get a slightly different number. So it's, you know, 136 cranking amps. Not the 650 it's supposed to be. You've got about 10 milliohms, 10 to 12 milliohms in these cables and all the wiring. So even if your battery were zero resistance, you would at most have about 240 cranking amps. So <laughs> I don't know. I think that's I think that's about it. I'm not going to tear this apart any farther. So I think I will call that good enough. I mean, these are not starting batteries. They're uh, deep cycle UPS kind of batteries. Is is what these are mainly intended for. I think the mystery of the high internal resistance just comes down to having a good heavy connection here and using a meter like this is a four wire meter so it's got the the voltage and the current sense wires in each clamp. The eye charger I imagine if I hooked up a balance cable it might do a better job. The problem is if you don't have a four wire meter then you're measuring the resistance of the wires that you're connecting to the battery plus the resistance of the battery and its wirings. I think in that case the uh, eye charger was you know running through its little uh, charging leads and banana jacks and XT60 connectors and there was enough additional resistance that it got a high reading. So I think I can live with that's what 22, 22 milliohms out of the clamps here. So I think I think that's good enough.